On January 2nd, 1982, the San Diego Chargers defeated the Miami Dolphins in an epic overtime battle. Rolf Banerska had missed what should have been the game-winning field goal early in the overtime period. But after Miami had its own kick block soon after, Banerska got another chance to kick the winner. This time, he made it, lifting the bolts to a 41-38 win. According to teammate and quarterback Dan Fouts, that moment encapsulated Banerska's character and the remarkable story of a man who came back from a life-threatening condition to a life-changing career. The, the fact that he, that he did miss a game winner and then came back and hit the game winner really shows you uh, what he's made of because, uh, you know, he got a second chance. And he's talked about that in his, in his life, about getting a second chance and, and taking advantage of it. And, and that's what he did in that game, you know. And, uh, you know, sometimes games are a metaphor for life, and, and it was no never more evident than in that situation. Banerska starred for UC Davis in the mid-1970s. He had led both the Aggie football and soccer teams in scoring, juggling the challenges of playing two sports in the same season. In 1977, the Oakland Raiders selected Banerska in the final round of the NFL draft. Then a waivers mix-up resulted in Banerska returning home to San Diego to kick for the Chargers. But almost as soon as his pro career began, it was sidetracked. Banerska was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, a type of inflammatory bowel disease. In 1979, his health worsened. He collapsed during a Chargers road trip and underwent emergency surgery that ultimately saved his life. By the time he was released from the hospital, Banerska was down to 125 pounds and fitted with ostomy appliances. He thought his NFL career was over. Later that same year, Banerska returned to the Chargers as an honorary captain for a game against the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was so weak and so frail that defensive tackle Louis Kelcher had to walk him by the hand during the pregame ceremonies. The image of that poignant moment still hangs in the Kelcher's home today. I can't even remember who won the toss, but uh, we were walking off the field, and yeah, I think Rolf uh, looked up and said, you know, he didn't know, uh, he's getting tired, didn't know if he was going to make it, and uh, I just reached out and grabbed his hand, and uh, you know, the rest is, uh, is history. Uh, we were uh, bonded together for life with that picture, and uh, it's something I'll never forget. With a combination of his hard work and his faith, Banerska made his way back onto the football field in 1980. Over the course of his career, he scored 766 points, setting a team record. At the time he retired from the game, he was the third most accurate kicker in league history. Also during his playing career, Banerska exhibited a trait that would earn him the 1983 NFL Man of the Year Award, his charitable side. The former UC Davis zoology major started Kicks for Critters, in which he donated $50 to the San Diego Zoo for every field goal he made. Again, Dan Fouts. With the starting the Kicks for Critters, really, that was the first type of program that I can recall in the NFL where players would, would uh, donate money based upon their performance and it was a brilliant idea and uh, one that uh, worked out very well uh, for for Rolf for the zoo and, and really put him in a very positive light uh, in the San Diego community. In time, Kicks for Critters transformed into an annual event called the Celebration for the Critters, which continues to run today. Chuck Beeler, the zoo's executive director when Banerska founded the benefit, commends the impact Rolf has had. It was really quite remarkable. He created an atmosphere for fundraising, for public relations, and goodwill in the community, and it just carried over. And it carried over in a program that raised uh, approximately $10 million in that era, and maybe uh, a residual since then. And Rolf, you were a great credit to us, and I want to thank you, and I want to say congratulations. Such gratitude for Banerska comes from many directions. According to Rick Geswell, the CEO of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America, 
Banershka has served as his organization's number one advocate for counseling patients into undergoing the same surgery that saved his life in 1979. You know, you won't find Rolf Banershka's name listed with our founders, but he had as much uh, importance to CCFA for what he's contributed to us and put us on the map as any founder of any organization. Among those inspired by Banershka is Charlie Grotevent, an Illinois farmer who was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in the late 1970s. After suffering IBD symptoms for six years, Charlie underwent surgery in 1983. Within months after recovering, he returned to his pastime of running. Charlie Grotevent, now 71 years old, has since run the Boston Marathon five times. These emotional challenges are oftentimes greater than the physical challenges associated with recovering from the surgery. And Rolf truly shows that the obligation of the cure is reaching out to others with encouragement and inspiration to assist them in going forward with their lives just as he's done with me. Even the highest office in the nation reached out to Banerska for his guidance. This is Marvin Bush, the son of the 41st President of the United States. Uh, my dad, uh, George Bush, was Vice President of the United States at that time, and he was understandably worried about my, my physical health as, where I, as well as where I was mentally after having had an emergency surgery that pretty much saved my life. I, I was pretty down at that point, uh, thinking that my life was never going to get better, and, but my dad, knowing how important sports were to me, asked Rolf if he might give me a call uh, when I was at a particularly low point in the hospital. His words were uh, incredibly inspirational and helped me look into the future with a sense of hope and optimism. Both during and after his NFL playing career, plus a stint as the host of TV's Wheel of Fortune, Banerska has been a philanthropist and a public advocate almost without peer. He founded Great Comebacks, which has grown into a global community for those who live with Crohn's, colitis, or other similar diseases. The Rolf Banerska Legacy Golf Tournament has raised nearly $4 million for the CCFA and other charities since its formation in 2001. He has also served as a voice in the fights against hepatitis C and high blood pressure. UC Davis football coach Jim Soaker. And so UC Davis should be extremely proud to have him as a representative, as a graduate, uh, as an ambassador of, of this great university. He's uh, nationally known and you know, just a wonderful, wonderful person extolling the virtues of UC Davis. And again, Marvin Bush. It's hard uh, to imagine anyone being more generous and giving and loyal in spirit uh, than Rolf Banerska. And I know everyone at UC Davis is proud to count him among your friends, and so am I. Congratulations, Rolf, and thank you for everything. Tonight, we honor Rolf Banerska for the honorable way in which he has represented himself, UC Davis, and UC Davis Athletics with the presentation of the Aggie Legacy Award.